everyone, and welcome to the Dodge Display at the Chicago Auto Show. For 2018, Dodge rocked the high-performance car world with the introduction of its most powerful muscle car ever. It was that limited production challenger SRT Demon. Well now, for 2019, Dodge continues to push the performance envelope by introducing its most powerful SRT Hellcat lineup ever. And it's led by the brand new 2019 Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat Red Eye. The Demon Possessed Hellcat Red Eye is the fastest and most powerful muscle car available. It combines the best of the SRT Demon and the SRT Hellcat into one vehicle. Under its hood lies the most powerful V8 engine. This is the high output supercharged 6.2 liter Hemi Hellcat V8. Boasting an incredible 797 horsepower and 707 pound-feet of torque. And like its theming brethren, the Hellcat Red Eyes engine has 25 major component upgrades, including the most powerful supercharger of any production car and the exclusive SRT Power Chiller which uses air conditioning refrigerant to lower intake air temperatures for improved performance. With a zero to 60 time of just 3.4 seconds and a top speed of 203 miles per hour, the Hellcat Red Eye leaves its competition in the dust. Now let's check out what its hood looks like. Refocusing on its performance roots, the Hellcat Red Eye's race-inspired exterior right here, what you can see, this is a dual snorkel aluminum hood. This pays homage to Dodge's muscle cars of the 70s, but it has a modern interpretation that looks even more sinister. Now you see, it feeds fresh air straight into the open air induction system, as does those air catcher headlamps for improved performance. This adds an additional 10 horsepower to the standard SRT Hellcat, which by the way is now up to 717 horsepower. And it contributes to the Hellcat Red Eye's class leading performance. Now both the 2019 SRT Hellcat and the new Hellcat Red Eye are also available in wide body versions, which is what's displayed right here. This includes wide body competition suspension, and integrated fender flares, which add an additional 3.5 inches of width to the vehicle for a more muscular appearance. They also allow for wider 20 by 11 inch forged aluminum wheels and massive Pirelli P0 performance tires, which provide the additional grip that Hellcat enthusiasts have been asking for. Now let's check out what its interior looks like. Refocusing on its performance roots, the Hellcat Red Eye's race-inspired interior features heated, pound-stoop cloth performance seats with the SRT Hellcat logo as standard equipment. But what you guys are looking at here, this is actually my personal favorite. This is the heated and ventilated Napa leather. We do also have Laguna leather seats and Alcantara seats as other options. And what you'll also find is a leather-wrapped flat bottom and heated steering wheel, which by the way feels great driving when it's freezing like it is out here in Chicago. And you'll also find the SRT Performance Pages. This you can access through the updated 8.4 inch Uconnect touchscreen for a truly unique driving experience. All 2019 Hellcat models are loaded with standard performance features, including an SRT tuned Bilstein three mode adaptive suspension system, as well as Brembo performance brakes with six piston front calipers and massive 15.4 inch rotors, as well as those amazing race inspired features like torque reserve and launch control for an enhanced performance both on and off the track. Now, this is my favorite part about the vehicle, the SRT drive modes. The SRT drive modes allow users to customize their performance settings. They can customize things like their horsepower, their transmission shifts, their steering feel, traction, and their adaptive suspension calibrations, all through that amazing 8.4 inch Uconnect touchscreen, which features Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Now, for those of you guys that love turning up your music, we have two awesome options for our sound system. 
The first is the standard Alpine premium sound system, and the second is an 18 speaker, 900 watt Harman Kardon sound system for your listening enjoyment. The 2019 SRT Hellcat Red Eye is part of the most exciting lineup that Dodge has ever unleashed on the streets. So we thank each and every one of you for stopping by today to come check it out. If you guys have any questions, you can either ask myself, my name is Athena, or you can ask any of our product specialists, which you can find on the showroom floor. Once again, thank you so much for stopping by Dodge, and enjoy the rest of the Chicago Auto Show. additional 20% on top of the $71,000. Um, the wide body package as you see here is an extra $6,000 um, and then the Napa leather seats are about an extra $700 if you do the full. Okay and did yeah. you say does it come with only the 8-speed auto or can you get a manual as well? Only 8-speed automatic eight with the paddle shifters yeah okay. yeah the regular Hellcat we do allow for also a stick shift if you want to do that that is a six-speed but for the red eye we only do it as um, automatic. Okay so how is this different to the Demon then? Oh, okay, a lot of different things. Well, this one is, has a lot more of the user friendliness, it's a lot more luxurious, and that's actually the factor that we got from the Hellcat. The Demon really was meant for taking on the track, for racing it. So, I, I mean, again, it's a collector's item. Um, it was built with a one-seater, the Demon. This one is built with a five-seater. Um, and of course, with the, the Demon, having that one seat, if you want to get the extra package, it actually was a dollar if you wanted those extra seats. But again, it was really meant to be taken on, on the track. It had uh, skinnier wheels in the front, so when you hit the accelerator, it would have that lift. This has the same capability. If you actually swap out these wheels that you see here, you actually can put in those skinnier wheels that the Demon had, and have that same lift when you hit the accelerator to hit that zero to 60 in 3.4 seconds. Uh, another thing that's actually a bit different is this one, it, it, you know, the inside, it, we really did try to build it so that you can really take it more on the road. It is street legal. You are able to actually take it out and it will last you, you know, a bit longer. Um, and then also similarities with the Demon is we do have the power chiller system, which is what I was mentioning before. That is that purple liquid you see in here. This is the air conditioning refrigerant. So what that does is that combines with the air that we intake down here through these air intakes, air catcher headlamps on both sides. And that pulls in fresh air. We then combine it with the air conditioning system to lower the temperature, hence increasing the horsepower. We did also put this on our standard Hellcat, which is what brought it up to that 717. And then this right here, the air filter, this comes in through this area up here. So that's where we pull in the fresh air. And that comes straight in through the dual snorkel aluminum hood. So both of these are functional. This one goes straight in, this one tunnels through, comes out through there, and boom. It is not faster than Demon. Um, you can definitely tune it up to make it a bit um, like right, right at Demon level. The Demon was 808 horsepower. This is a 797 horsepower. But you know, you strip those seats out, you definitely can increase your horsepower, yeah. less drag. So you totally can do that. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Last question. Did you get yes. to meet Vin Diesel? I did not meet Vin no? Diesel. No. Okay. <laughs> I know he was at the Detroit show. Right. I think he unveiled the, uh, the Demon last year. Last year, yeah. yeah I wasn't there at that time. There. No, that would have been okay. so cool though. Yeah, yeah I know. Awesome. Right? No, you probably no more. We made 3,300 of them, and we said we'd only make it as exclusive collector's item just for that one year.
we're looking at two different models here. This is the Venice, the Vanderhall Venice, and this is the Vanderhall Carmel. Uh, the Vanderhall Venice is powered by a 1.4 liter turbocharged engine, making about 183 horsepower. Uh, the hood is actually locked for safety purposes to the auto show today. Um, this unit right here makes about 200 horsepower. Uh, it's a six-speed automatic transmission. It uh, has suicide doors on there, paddle shifters, uh, tetronic paddle shifters. You're looking at 19-inch wheels all around. Uh, storage compartment behind the seats. You've got heated uh, seats. You've got a heating system inside. In addition to a 200-watt Bluetooth audio system. One front suspension. Well, doors open would, this way. Or I would suicide doors. 200 horsepower. What kind of engine is in here? You said it's a four cylinder, is it based off of So it's a 1.5 liter turbo engine. Uh, they're powered by a GM engine. Okay. So you see a lot of these engines in like a uh, Chevy. Yeah. Okay. And then the car itself is uh, manufactured from where? Yeah. Okay, I, see, I go by Iron Gate Motor Cars quite a bit. I know there's one there. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what, what's the difference between this one over here? That one's got like a shifter on the side of it? Looking at this model, this is the Vanderhall Venice, so it's a smaller model with less door or less less room inside. It doesn't have the doors. It doesn't have the doors. Oh yeah. I like that. Are they both automatic transmissions? Okay. Uh, this one has the capability of uh, adding a function to the side. Can I see the storage space? Okay, Ellen. Okay. 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 Storage space in here, it's not an extremely large area, but it does enable you to put a coat or anything that you might need to put in there. A lot okay. of people are putting in the storm cover. Okay, so can you drive it with a uh, like a top on it or so the Venice does not have a soft top option yet. No. It does uh, the Carmel does have a soft top option. Okay. This one Chicago about six months ago. Okay. Uh, 
So this is a Speedster. This is a very unique uh, model. There's only a hundred of them. This is number 75. Uh, this one is more for a solo rider. You've got tons of storage, like the storage in there. It's still powered by a 1.4 liter uh, engine. You still have the 100 watt audio system. Does this one have a soft top canopy that can go over it? This does not have a soft top canopy that can go over it. This does have a storm cover. Uh, yeah, this one just looks a little, a little more protected, you know. Plus wind. And, you know. I mean, is it the same? Like, base chassis then? Is, uh, the normal Venice? Yes. And it's, okay, just been and modified. It, it's been modified from the body of it. From see, the that's what I mean. I don't see it like you come home with it. Please, please don't sit in it. Please don't sit in it. All right, well, cool. Pleasure talking to you, man. Thank you. Why is that one driving this? What is wrong? Where's that base?
Good afternoon, Chicago, and welcome to Lexus. My name is Michael. I am a product specialist, and over the next few minutes, it is my pleasure to walk you through our LC500 convertible concept here on display. You are some of the first to feast your eyes on it. We unveiled our convertible concept version of the LC500 just a few weeks ago at the North American International Auto Show, and it is our pleasure to bring it here to Chicago to get your feedback and hear what exactly you think about our newest concept that is here in this ultra white. I know first things first, you're thinking, what's the price? What's underneath the hood? I don't want to lie to you, so I can't tell you those things because we don't have a price. We don't know what's underneath the hood, but what we do know is that if you guys like it, we'll make it. In fact, the LC500, we made, right? We started that as a concept years ago, and you liked it so much that we brought it, made it production, and it's here on display right there in flare yellow. You can sit in it, you can enjoy it. It's a production model. We want that type of feedback on this one, our convertible. Would you rather see it as a hard top, a soft top? Let a product specialist know, and maybe we'll make it for you. In the front, of course, that Lexus design language, and it's accompanied by those triple beam tricuster LED headlamps with daytime running lamps in the shapes of L's. That's Lexus design language. Here at Lexus, we like to scatter and incorporate L's in all of our vehicles, and of course, you can see that right there in those headlamps. Now, this ultra white, part of the concept is these wheels, right? 22 inch wheels, that's part of the concept. It's already an award winning vehicle, in fact, in Detroit a few weeks ago, the team at Eyes on Design said this had the best design exterior lighting of all the vehicles at the North American International Show, Auto Show, so as a convertible concept, I can say it's award winning, I just did that. Our LC500 convertible concept comes with that chiffon white perforated leather, and of course, as I told you about those front headlamps, what about these taillights? Take a good look at the taillights as they spin around, inspired by a jet fighter's afterburn. They give off that infinite, continuous effect where they just keep on going. It's a neat trick, probably why we want exterior lighting on our convertible concept. So the LC500, we want to know what you think. Hard top, soft top, let a product specialist know if you'd like. Tell them about the vehicle and what you'd like to see. Also, ask them any questions. They'll give you a personalized walk around. We've got a lot of vehicles here on display in Chicago. We've got a brand gallery. You may be walking around saying, I want to see the color of my vehicle. Well, you can do that on our wall chart. You can also hear about the Mark Levinson sound system right there in the GS. And you can get a e brochure sent to you. Go see the info desk for a product specialist. They'll do that. Set you up for a test drive at your local Chicago dealer. Or just say hello. Thanks so much for spending a little bit of your time here at Lexus, where we always invite you to experience amazing. No price. That's free. I'm going to take that guess and remember it. Good afternoon, Chicago, and welcome to the auto show. Most of all, welcome to Lexus. I'm standing at the left corner of our Lexus display. If you can hear my voice, but you cannot see me, make your way over to the gorgeous RCF Track Edition. I'm standing next to the RCF Track Edition here at the front of our Lexus display. I would love to tell you a little bit more about this vehicle. So in our Lexus family, we have the RCF and now the RCF Track Edition. What differs? We've shaved off about 176 pounds off of the vehicle weight by replacing steel components with carbon fiber. As you can see, there's a carbon fiber skirt on this model, the hood, the roof, that fixed carbon fiber wing in the back. If you lean in, you'll see that F that stands for Fuji Speedway, as in Fuji Speedway in Japan, because this is a race car, but it is also street legal. That fixed wing is going to add about 58 pounds of downforce to keep those sticky track tires on the track when you're going really fast. We've also utilized a titanium exhaust, so it's going to be lighter, but the same strength as the steel. In this model, we have a 5.7 liter engine. It is a V8. It is an eight-speed automatic transmission. It is naturally aspirated. It's going to give you 472 horsepower and 395 pound-feet of torque. Now, this is no joke. This is definitely a performance model, and it is unmistakably a Lexus. You can see that signature Lexus grill here. We have the Lexus L's intertwined in a spindle. We call that our Lexus design language. We incorporate those Lexus L's throughout in really meticulous, detailed ways, as in the lights as well. 
Notice these really beautiful triple stacked LEDs. This has carbon ceramic brakes. It's got 19 inch wheels and it's got this really beautiful matte finish. A really nice satiny matte finish. This is called Matte Nebula. In combination with that gorgeous carbon fiber, we've gotten a lot of compliments. What do you all think of that? I'm seeing a lot of heads nod. It is absolutely stunning. Bring your attention to the interior of this model. I'd love to show you the Alcantara and Aniline combination in here. That really nice suede is gonna grip you and keep you in your seat. That's got a really beautiful red hue on there. And we also have launch control in this model. So you're going to be able to maximize that throttle and traction, maximize performance to get you from zero to 60 in 3.96 seconds. Yes, 3.96 seconds. Absolutely amazing. So not only is this vehicle incorporating a lot of our Lexus design language, we've got a lot of sleek and sexy lines that sits really low. We've gotten a lot of great feedback. What is your favorite aspect of the vehicle, sir? Carbon fiber everywhere, yes. And everybody seems to be loving that carbon fiber. I'd love to tell you more about this vehicle here today. I would be so happy to give you more information, send you home with some information as well. Here at Lexus, we do speak a multitude of languages, and we would love to answer your questions in those as well. Muy buenas tardes de parte de Lexus. Estaremos acá para responder a cualquier pregunta que tengan sobre nuestros vehículos esta tarde. Bonjour, et bienvenue à notre exposition de voitures ici à Chicago. Si vous avez des questions sur les voitures, nous sommes ici pour vous aider. Now we are only making 60 of these vehicles. These will be out in April. We are only making 60. Come on over. Be some of the first to see this vehicle in person. It is so impressive. It is absolutely beautiful. It's a track car. It's street legal. It is unmistakably Lexus. And we truly invite you to be our guest in our display this afternoon and experience amazing. the engine then how much horsepower it has and yeah it's a it's a 5.7 liter engine it's a v8 uh, it's naturally aspirated it's an eight speed automatic transmission it's 472 horsepower 395 torque okay and the vehicle weighs uh it weighs 4, about 000? yes this vehicle i believe weighs about 3872 okay and i think you said the carbon fiber uh all together you said about 100 176 pounds, pounds of vehicle weight normal model. okay yeah. 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 all right Thank you very much. Of course, thank you. How did you learn so many languages? Um, Spanish is my first language. Oh. Um, I learned English when I was like eight or nine, um, and then I started taking French. Nice, okay. Yeah.
All right, so what do I gotta do? All right. So blow into here like birthday candles. Oh, I'll no. tell you when to stop, okay? Don't put your mouth on it. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Good. Thank you guys. Finish your day. All right, here we go. And you passed. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Big time. We were only doing three shows this year. We were. Um... You said left and left. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. You want you to go. Yeah, I see. I'm just driving careful. Yeah. Okay. So with your engine and transmission combination, mm -hmm. your powertrain, uh, uh -huh. it's um, you get 19 miles per gallon. That's pretty good for city. a pickup truck, yeah. 24 highway, 21 combined. Very that's good. Pretty good. Considering, yeah. hey, you're in a vehicle that's mm -hmm. uh, weighs and what's towing well capacity? North of five thousand pounds. Uh, towing capacity is not up to nine thousand pounds, nine thousand. properly equipped. Okay. Now that this does not have the max trail range. Oh. Okay. All right. Um, does not have the uh, max tiller towing, uh -huh. so it would be somewhat less that. But if right. you had to, that, then we're gonna probably go straight or left. Yeah, why don't we uh, get in the center lane here? Please, sure. Thank you. You could tow up to nine thousand pounds. Now that said, properly equipped and F series can tow as much as thirteen thousand two hundred pounds. Uh -huh. Right. So how's the uh, the V six twin turbo compare with the uh, the five liter V eight? Uh, the five liter V eight is going to have. Uh, more, more towing capability than 2.7, mm -hmm. this this version. But if you get the three, the the, the strongest towing engine is the 3.5. So you got liter. the auto start. Uh, stop, yes, sir. Yeah. Auto stop. Sorry. Yeah. The strongest towing engine is the 3.5 liter EcoBoost. Really? Yes. Okay. Really? Yes. So the the premium engine is that the the, the V8 or the the, yep. the V6 well, twin turbo? Well, it the, the the premium engine would be in my opinion, the 3.5 liter EcoBoost. There's actually a high output version they put in. It's the same engine. The Raptor. But uh, you can get into limited now. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, straight ahead or? Yeah, so we're gonna go straight, we're gonna go down here a ways and we'll make a U-turn. Okay. Sure. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us here at Ford. My name is Rebecca, and I am over next to what I think is the most exciting car here at the Chicago Auto Show, and this is the Ford GT Supercar. So the Ford GT, this is a street legal race car right here, and I want to tell you a little bit about the history of this Ford GT. So back in 1960s, Henry Ford II wanted to create a car that could beat Ferrari at the 24 Hours of Le Mans in France. Well, they achieved that goal, and in 1966, the Ford GT40 took first, second, and third place at that race. And then the Ford GT went back to win again in 1967, 68, and 69. 
So then fast forward 50 years, in 2016, Ford decides it's time to get into the game of racing at Le Mans again. So they create the Ford GT race car. And happy to say 50 years to the day, the new Ford GT race car wins the Le Mans 24 hour race and then also takes third and fourth place. And so there will be one more year of racing at Le Mans 2019 and uh, that will complete the four-year cycle of racing this particular 4GT, so we hope for another podium win coming up in June. So in order to race at Le Mans, you have to have a production version of your race car within that year. So Ford created this production version, that's what you're looking at here. These are very special, very rare, only 1,300 total units will be built. Now it's not something you can just walk into your dealership and say, hey, I want a Ford GT, I've got to order one, I'm going to plop down my half a million dollars to get the Ford GT. You can't do that, you have to go through an application process and get an allocation from Ford. And then if you're lucky enough to get that allocation, then you can start choosing your colors. Now one of the options for 2019 is this Heritage Edition. And we've had some other Heritages in the past, this one is based off the winning car in 1968. So we will have one more Heritage next year, and that will be based off the 69 car, also in the famous Golf livery that you see here, only the one for next year will have a number six on it. So why is this car so expensive? Well, there's a lot that goes into it. So it is hand-built. There, there are no machines, there are no assembly lines. There is assembly line, but it's all moved around by people. And so it's all carbon fiber. This entire body is carbon fiber and it's riding on a lightweight aluminum subframe. Now it looks very beautiful to look at, but every form definitely has function on this car. It's all about the air intake and the flow and the cooling. The air flows around the vehicle and as you race down the track, it's probably the most aerodynamic car that is out there. So what's powering our Ford GT is a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 EcoBoost engine. And they're saying, V6, how could you do that? The car doesn't need it. We don't need to weigh this thing down. It is so aerodynamic. It is so lightweight because of the carbon fiber. We get 647 horsepower and 550 pound-feet of torque out of this engine. Our top speed on the GT is 216 miles per hour. Our zero to 60 is three seconds. That engine is matched with a a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission, and you shift the gears with the paddle shifters that are right there on your steering wheel. There are a lot of controls that are right there on the steering wheel, so you have everything at your fingertips, so you don't have to take your hands off the wheel as you're racing down the track. Some other cool features, the seats are fixed, so they don't move. They're fixed to the carbon fiber tub, but the pedals and the steering wheel come toward you. And there is a very sophisticated hydraulic system that can raise and then lower the car down into track mode. And that hydraulic system also deploys the rear spoiler. So this thing can come up and then even if you're going 260 miles an hour, it will flip up this way and help give you some drag so you slow down a little bit. So again, very limited in production. If you guys have questions about it, please come on over here. I'd be happy to tell you more. But if I can't talk about Ford racing and not mention another very special person in the Ford racing history, and that would be Mr. Carroll Shelby. And we are very excited to carry on his legacy with a new Shelby GT500 right over here on display. It was just revealed last month. And it is going to be the most powerful production street legal Ford ever with over 700 horsepower. So if you guys have questions about that too, we'll tell you what we know. But thank you again for visiting us here at Ford tonight. And if you would like to test drive a Ford, Sorry, not the GT or the GT500, but just about anything else that the dealership Ford will send you a $50 MasterCard gift card just for taking that test drive. And how much? I, I, met, I did mention it. Starts with half a million. Half a million. Half. That's it. Yep. Pennies, right? Yeah. All right. So, guys, if you have more questions, I'll be happy to answer those off mic. But thank you again for joining us, and have a great evening.
If I had the money, I'd buy a turkey. Well, you have to get an allocation first. So the people that get them, if, if they decide they want to sell them, they can't sell them for two years. So, oh. Yeah, so you might be able to get one. Let's be a second one. I got my eye on that Ford Harley Davidson truck. Oh, yeah. Because I have the 2000. Nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Very proud. Are you able to open the hood? I can't open anything. No. No. Sorry. It's not that it's secret, but this is a show car, and so bad things happen when we open things up. I agree with you. It's probably the most exciting car there is here. Thank you. It could have had 647, yeah. but um, because the, the sanctioning bodies, they actually penalized us because we were so fast and so right. and so aerodynamic. They took away a lot of our boost, and so it took away quite a bit of horsepower and added weight to the vehicle as well. So okay. I, I thought that, yeah. Yeah, so the, the and they keep adding more because in, in 2016 they did that, but they didn't. They we still won, and so then they keep each year they put more and more on, which is just not fair, but. Okay, great. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Which is the way?
the Infinity range. So my name's Patricia, and I'm your Infinity Pro Specialist, right here I'm standing next to a brand new concept vehicle. This vehicle is called the Prototype 10. Now, what would it look like if we had a 1930s, 1940s race car in that golden era of racing? Well, this is the designer's answer to that. As you can see, it's fusing the old with the new. So you have the lines, very exclusive lines, very aerodynamic, and that resembles very much of the 1930s, 1940s race car racing, race car drivers. And that's where the influence does come from. from. But it's also fusing the old with the new. So as you can see, we have design cues from the Cubic Q50 and the Q60. There's double stitching this beautiful leather and it's influenced by Formula One as well. Also, we have this Formula One looking stereoscopic wheel right here. And in the middle of the wheel, you can see that we have a touch screen as well. So again, using the old and new. For more aerodynamic, we have the windscreen. You can see it's very low as well. Now, this is 100% electric. Okay, so in 2021, the ability is going all electric, which is great for us, or e-powered as well. So we're really looking forward to that in 2021. So again, the technology, the motor is going to be at the back. And as you can see, we have a lot of airflow right here. So behind the driver and also on the side as well, so the air can come in and also input and output at the back as well. Beautiful design, using the old with the new. So Infinity does have this new technologies coming out soon. Now, that bridging that gap between now and 2021, we have the VC turbo engine. VC stands for variable compression. And it is a turbo engine, as I said, and it stands on its own just behind the concept vehicle. Now, at high compression ratios, you are looking at more fuel efficiency. At low compression ratios, you are looking at more power. So the ratio, the compression ratio, does go between 8.1 and 14.1. So you are finding that it's faster than the lower compression ratio, so the torque is amazing. You are looking at 280 pound feet of torque, 268 pound feet when it does come to spend horsepower. Now we have debuted that on the QX53 right there. So you can be the first to really try out this VC. Now again, Infinity is world's first when it does come to technology. On this new VC turbo engine, it's extremely affordable. It acts like a V6, so you get it to the one. We also have the heads-up display in this amazing vehicle right here. So you can really track your speed limits and some of the road signs of that vehicle as well. We have the back up, so if there's something coming from the back of you that you don't see, it literally puts the brakes on for you. And then we have the around the view monitor. We were the first to do that as well. So we have cameras on each side of the mirrors, also at the front and also at the back, giving you a 360 degree camera angle plus the bird's eye view, so the car can be very simple. Again, if you want any further information, please do not hesitate to ask myself or any other product specialist in our display. We'll be happy to send you the e-brochure and we'll send you for a test drive as well. But also visit infinityusa.com and you can build your own production vehicle from scratch there too. Thank you again for stopping by. Remember to empower the drive and have a great day here at the Chicago Auto Show. How fast did you say it goes? Um, the f this one is not actually got any specs. With this one, it is a concept vehicle. So right now, it's all electric. There's no specifications on that. Oh, okay. On the other hand, when I did speak about the VC turbo engine, we are looking at like a two, um, 270 when it does come to, um, sorry, 280 when it does come to the um, torque and then 268 when it does come to the horsepower.
Now, so. is this going to be part of some competition? Is it trying to be the, the world's fastest electric car or, or something like that? Or, no, or no, racing? no. As a concept vehicle, it's all experimentation. It's all experimentation. It's okay. all experimentation okay. as a concept vehicle. I thought, I thought it was in a, a race series or something like that. No, so. no. Okay. So the idea behind it is like, what if we were in the golden era of racing? What would it look like? And this is the idea. It's a design idea concept. Okay. Yeah. And you said by 2021, yes. Infinity wants to be an all-electric fleet? Yeah, well, well, no, all the new vehicles will be all e-powered, so all electric. Okay. Yeah, so some of the new vehicles will be that. Interesting, mm -hmm. okay. Can I take another look at that steering wheel there? I want to see the you screen, I missed around. that. Yeah. yeah. It's on? No, it's not oh, on. No. No. You've got your paddle shifters at the side as well. Oh, okay. So I don't think I've ever seen a car without a door. This is a, it's a yeah. first for me. Well, I mean, you know, yeah, back in the day, that's what people did. They jumped in. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Because right. that's the whole idea. Of, you know, the ideas of the design of it is like 1930s, 1940s. What would it look like? You know, so it's just like a really great, fun design project, okay. as well as fusing the old with the new. Yeah. Where are you from, by the way? England. Okay. I, th I thought so, but I didn't know. Yeah. yeah. Which part of England? Manchester. So the variable compression, is it, how is it controlled? Is it electronically controlled or hydraulically controlled? No, it's the, um, basically it's the, the compression, it, it's the pistons. Right. So you've got like, um, it's really kind of difficult to explain. Know, it has you like see a rotating it? Gear. Yes, rotating. So this one is continuous and the actual pistons are no, continuous right. as well. So and what, ro what rotate, is it an electric motor that rotates? Mm -mm, no, there's no electric in it. No. Okay. But you, right here, you can see the kind of like um, cutaway. The cutaway of yeah. it, so you okay. can kind of like see it actually.